Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of God Saw's Turnbuckle, the wrestling video podcast here on YouTube. Uh, unfortunately, I, like I said yesterday, I'm kind of taking away Daily Motion for the time being, mainly due to, um, ma mainly basically due to the whole aspect of uh, upload times, everything in that sense, and it's just taking a good chunk of time to do, to do that. Uh, it's probably easier for me to just focus on one channel at this point in the terms of video side and then i am also going to start focusing on an audio side here down in the uh, here in the future uh that's going to happen somewhere very soon i'll talk about a little bit more of that in a weekend preview that i'll probably film later today or tomorrow or something in that sense because we're not here to talk about that we're here to talk about impact wrestling from june 22nd 2017 and uh this was a decent show uh it was a rather enjoyable show for the most part uh, uh honestly i felt like it was a very good job of building up going into the slammiversary event with maybe the exception of a couple of uh a couple of things here and there uh they started off the show right before they go into their intro with sienna and laurel van ness and Sienna's trying to get Laurel Van Ness to focus and, every, and get everything ready for their tag match later in the night. Uh, that could also become a handicap match because that was the whole whole thing that they'd been promoting throughout the night was that um, Rosemary was not in the building and may not show up for the match. But uh, the first match that they set up for the uh, for the evening was, again, like last week, they had a Sony 6 uh, gauntlet battle royal last week. Uh, and this week... They have a Sony 6 X Division elimination match. Again, just kind of throwing people together in that sense. And they even get uh, Eddie Edwards and uh, Davey Richards into this as well. Um, into this match. So you kind of get a little bit of build up in that, it, it, for that match inside of this. So it serves at least a little bit more of a purpose going into their Slammiversary match. It will be the Full Metal Mayhem mixed tag match. Or... Uh, <clears throat> To go along with it uh but everybody in the match was it was trevor lee davy richards suicide braxton sutter uh eddie edwards and matt seidel um i don't know when braxton like you know watching through this that i don't remember how braxton sutter got eliminated from the match itself uh which was a little bit uh, i i found that a little bit weird if it happened during like a um during the commercial break or something in that sense, but I missed where that actually happened. Um, you had uh, a su you had suicide who got eliminated by uh, Davy Richards after a I believe a power bomb uh, in this match, and then afterwards Eddie Edwards and Debbie, uh, Davy Richards kind of take each other out. Davy Richards hits um, kind of uh, he hits Eddie Edwards with a chair which gets him disqualified and they continue on brawling and, and they set it up to where Davey uh, Davey Richards had Eddie Edwards kind of in control and was gonna go for a running chair shot down the rampway which by the way he comically does it uh, it was in a very comical way that he decided to do it, which doesn't really fit with uh, their particular uh, feud because he takes the chair holds it over his head and runs down the ramp like overly comical uh to uh to potentially do this um <clears throat> but eddie edwards um actually reverses that and gets suple or like gets suplexed onto the onto the uh onto the chair that eddie edwards was sitting in a little bit later and they kind of take out each other in, in that sense um matt seidel ends up picking up the victory in the end with the shooting star press i thought the match overall in a whole was a good one and you served a little bit of purpose but pretty much no purpose for most of this match uh with the whole eddie edwards and davy richards but they were setting up for more for their pay-per-view match that was coming uh on july 2nd but otherwise the match as a whole kind of didn't really serve a purpose uh to the grand scheme of things uh and everything because uh, you know it's mainly they're showing stuff mainly focused around um, the fact that they're still in India ta for their tapings that they had done, uh, in, in that sense, and I, I do like what they do, what they're doing with a lot of the stuff uh, over over there because they are using the surroundings and everything in that sense. You see that with Rockstar Spud and Swoggle this week in the terms of their uh, of their feud and rivalry. You have Rockstar Spud going around trying to do. Um, 
trying to uh, take in the sights and everything in that in that sense. And he runs into Swoggle, and they start arguing. He and you have uh, Rockstar Spud hand his phone to someone. It's like, quick, hold this, and they run off with the phone. They just run off with the phone, and then they have someone else who gets uh, who intervenes a little bit later. And uh, I don't think you see anything else of that for the rest of the night. Uh, actually. I think that, uh, yeah, I think that was the only thing you see. So you might, uh, like, they may be going into some kind of counseling thing or something like that. I thought this was decent stuff. They they did some pretty decent stuff here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the actual feud, but uh, you're seeing some funny stuff, and, and, and it's not too bad. You got to give a little bit of credit where credit's due on that one. You, they did some good stuff here, the, and, they tr and they're doing everything they can to try to make this Swoggle and Rockstar Spud feud be as comical but also be as intense as possible at the same time and i think they're doing a decent job of that in that side on that side of everything uh, before they go to commercial break you have ali who's in the backstage area kind of worrying about um uh rosemary potentially not showing up for the match and everything in that sense so she's overly worried going into it kind of uh analyzing everything before going into the into that match and then afterwards they have a jb and joseph park thing um and they have jb trying to give a pep talk to joseph park who's really worried after the promo that scott steiner had given them from the week before and he starts talking about certain things that had happened in everything and i don't know if this was part to be part of being the joke of what was going on or a part of the comedy, but he gets who bombed Pearl Harbor wrong for World War II. He says Germany did it when it was Japan. Okay. Um, I, I Like I said, I don't know if that was part of the joke or something in that sense. Then he makes a gag at, um, uh, at when, the, like, things that didn't, like people didn't back down or we didn't back down when Josh Matthews was named lead announcer three years ago, everything in that sense. And then they did the, the mega powers handshake. Um, it, like the stuff you got from JB and everything was pretty good this week. It wasn't too bad. You got some good comedy in there. Uh, some portions you don't know whether or not it's supposed to be for comedy or if it was for, uh, if it was just them messing up, like I said, with the whole, and why they're using the Pearl Harbor attack, I don't know, as well, to go along with it uh, from World War II. It's like, uh, I'm not saying for old references, so it's like, it's a weird reference to use uh, in that sense of everything. Uh, especially in the sense of what they've been trying to go for, more comical. That's more of a serious aspect. And they went for a more comical thing uh, in everything else, and they used this serious bit. And then, of course, they make... Uh, semi light of it as well by getting the country that did the attack wrong to go along with it i uh, i don't know on that one i'm it's kind of just out there in that sense they do do another uh training montage a little bit later where both of them were doing uh dives into the pool and everything in, in that sense and working out and that, you had some funny stuff inside of there um i like the reference to aj styles uh that they put in there where JB's about to jump in there, he's like, get ready to fly. Good reference. I like that reference. It was a pretty good one. And then, of course, Joseph Park uh, goes in there and does a cannonball himself, uh, going to, uh, to finish off that, that portion of it. And that wasn't too bad. I, like I said, there was some funny stuff here that just the Pearl Harbor reference kind of got me a little weirded out. Uh, on that side of it. Uh, up next, you had Laurel Van Ness and Sienna going up against... Allie, and yes, Rosemary does appear. She makes it feel like she wasn't going to appear. Her music goes off. She doesn't come out. But she comes out from underneath the ring to attack, uh, to, well, to kind of, um, am uh, yeah, ambush uh, the uh, the heel team of Laurel Van Ness and Sienna, who are coming up to try to meet Allie at the rampway. Um, this was a really quick match. You even had Braxton Sutter and KM get involved in this match, where KM kind of uh, caused a distraction where in Braxton Sutter had come out uh, to uh, get rid of KM, but it allows Sienna 
and Laurel Van Ness to pick up the victory over Rosemary, where uh, Laurel Van Ness did like a curb stomp type move, and Sienna picked up the victory afterwards. Uh, like I said, really quick match here, uh, not much to it. And it's, it's also crazy how they make just they glance over the fact that this is the first time that Rosemary had been pinned in her Impact career. Like they completely glossed over it uh, and, and everything. They didn't really make too much of it. Up next, you had LAX, and they were cutting another promo. They were, they obviously didn't have them for the India uh, tapings and anything, so they didn't keep them on the show. They had them cut these promos where they're in that uh, like in their like their clubhouse or something in that sense. Uh, and they basically say, uh, continue on what they were doing last week, where they were going to go to other promotions, beat up the tag teams, everything in that, everything in that sense. They throw a few name, they throw a few names in the Florida area out there as well, and uh, and they also said that they were going to take their money and take the promotion, and everything to go along with it. And they show footage from that. Nothing too much from it, and it doesn't really. I don't know exactly where they're going to go with this uh, because they technically don't have a feud. Well, they technically have a feud with the whole Veterans of War thing, uh, though they might have killed that off with the Global Force Wrestling Tag Team title match as well, which, by the way, still don't care about those about those titles to go along with it, though they are announcing all of these matches like the, um, like the world title match with Lashley and El Patron and Sienna and uh, Rosemary as unification matches, which serve zero purpose. Again, whatever. Uh, again, whatever in that one uh, on that. But uh, we'll see where they go along with this. And we'll see if they have something for LAX going into um, going into the Slammiversary pay-per-view. They're not doing too bad, uh, too bad of work since they've come back. Um, and it'll be interesting to see where they go with it. They keep them with Veterans of War, or are they going to go with a different tag team or something in that sense? Because we haven't seen anything from them since essentially that that uh, tournament that they had done a few uh, weeks ago now, in that sense. Uh, so yeah, we'll see where they go with it. So up next, you had Sanjay Dutt, and they had him basically doing a celebration about winning the X Division title, everything in that sense. This was very similar to what you saw uh, weeks ago with Jinder Mahal uh, when he won the WWE title. Uh, they kind of did an Indian-based, uh, an India-based celebration and everything to go along with it. You, but, of course, this time it's more in the terms of being happy than it is in the... Or it's in the terms of everybody being happy because, you know, Sanjay does a face while Jinder Mahal is playing the heel, everything in that sense. So you had it kind of work a little bit differently where he's kind of dancing with everybody to go along with it where Jinder Mahal was kind of just showing his superiority over everything uh, while everyone else is doing the dancing and everything to go along with it. Uh, Sanjay Dutt cuts a promo about winning the X Division title and what it means to him, everything in that sense. Uh, decent stuff, kind of basic stuff to go along with it, but decent enough. Uh, Loki ends up interrupting this and he starts cutting a promo uh, in, in the terms of, it's like he's kind of trying to show a little bit of respect and everything, but also asking for his rematch, which Sanjay Dutt accepts and says, we're going to do this at Slammiversary, and it's going to be two out of three falls, where and of course they end up shaking hands. I like the aspect that for um, for Loki when he went to shake Sanjay Dutt's hand, he he removed the glove, because he, he's wearing that whole Hitman gimmick uh, type uh the professional, the hitman, like even or, or the Agent Forty Seven gimmick itself. So he always wears the gloves and the matches and everything in that sense. But to go shake his hand to show, try to show a sign of respect before, of course, he attacks him afterwards. Um, he removes the glove to shake his hand. I like that touch. It was a good touch there that they put into it. Uh, and uh, and then of course, as Sanjay that turns, he he gets attacked by Loki and he. And Loki basically takes out uh, Sanjay Dutt and Muhammad Ali Shira, who were all out there. Muhammad Ali Shira was out there as part of the celebration, and along with it. And he does the warrior's way to Muhammad Ali Shira. As he goes to do it to Sanjay Dutt, uh, Matt Seidel comes out and makes a save. So we're going to, I guess, lead somewhere with Matt Seidel down the road here 
uh, after they have the Slammiversary match. Or maybe they do something next week with Matt Seidel and Low Key going, in, uh, going somewhere down the line to go along with it. We'll see where they go with this. So this leads next to a match with KM and Mahamali Shira. Which, at least they had him, you know, going off and selling the injuries. It wasn't like it was taped earlier and then just kind of placed there. So he's selling the injuries, uh, rib injuries from uh, from the Warriors' way. The doctors are like, no, you shouldn't go out there and do this. Uh, you know, basically trying to make it feel like Mahali Shear is in no shape to go out there and compete. Which he, of course, w wants to fight through, being the... Uh, being the guy who is like, you know, I fight through these things and everything in that sense. Again, this was a rather quick match with Muhammad Ali Shira going over in this match with a sky high. Uh, it was mainly dominated by KM, but uh, Muhammad Ali Shira hits the sky high and ends up getting a victory. Uh, and then Congo Kong comes out there and they basically beat down Muhammad Ali Shira where Congo Kong does a splash afterwards uh, to, uh, to Muhammad Ali Shira. You get nothing from Braxton Sutter in this one because they had the whole bit with KM and Sutter beforehand. And I know they had been done this, doing this thing where Braxton Sutter uh, and uh, Mohamed Shira had been teaming up against Congo Kong and uh, KM, but you see nothing with Braxton Sutter here. He doesn't attempt to make the save or anything in that sense. Uh, so right before the main event, uh, you had a bit where they had advertised that Moose was going to announce who his tag team partner was going to be for his match at Slammiversary. Yeah, he's not defending the uh, the Grand Championship. He is just in a tag match. Uh, a little bit weird on that one. So Chris Adonis and Eli Drake come out. They start cutting a promo on Moose, everything in that sense, saying, oh, he doesn't have a tag team partner, anything in that sense. And then Moose comes out and he says, you know what? Technically, you're right. Eli Drake, I don't have a partner in the building, but I do have a partner. And he announces his partner being the ex NFL, uh, the ex NFL superstar D'Angelo Williams. And they cut to showing a bunch of uh, promo pa uh, promo packages of him working on wrestling and everything in that sense. Moose putting him over to go along with it. And then when they come back from that, like they have all like uh, Eli Drake and Adonis had already attacked Moose and they beat down Moose to finish off the segment. Um, interesting segment, and we'll see where they go with this whole D'Angelo Williams thing because obviously he's just learning wrestling and we'll see how much he actually has learned in that short time span to go along with it uh to go uh, yeah to go along with everything we'll see where they go with that uh and, and everything in that sense like there they have some limitations on what they can do to build up this pay-per-view because uh, obviously a lot a good chunk of the people are there but people like d'angelo williams and scott steiner and everything in that sense nowhere to be found in, in any of these so they had to work their way differently into um doing some of these segments and you've seen that with the whole jb joseph park training thing where you had scott steiner cutting the skating promo on them and everything to go along with it um so we'll see if they do anything else with d'angelo williams in, in that sense and that's in a different probably more serious style going into uh, into the pay-per-view, uh, which I think is just a couple weeks away now. Yeah, they have like one more show before Slammiversary now. So this leads to the main event of the night, which they have been, um, which they have been promoting throughout the entire uh, throughout the show. That it was going to be James Storm and Alberto El Patron going up against EC3 or E Sing Three, who which he's still going by that. I like the touch. That he's like he's in India trying to find his center and everything. And instead of wanting to be referred to as EC3, he wants to be referred to as e e Sing 3 And he changed up the music and they changed up the Titan Tron and everything to go along with it. I like the touches that they're going with this. Uh, in that in that sense, to try to you know display that and see if uh, they basically just go back to EC3 for Slam Anniversary. And he's teaming up with Bobby Lashley. Um, this match ends in a DQ and big brawl after the match, which I find very interesting that the, that the, you know, El Patron and James Storm win the match by DQ after EC3 straps Bobby Lashley. And they, and throughout the match, they kind of, 
were not, they were trying to do as much as they can without having each opponent working with each other. Uh, so you saw a lot of Patron working with EC3 and a lot of Lashley working with James Storm in that sense. And you had small little touches here and there where they were actually doing things with each other. Uh, I thought that was good, uh, a good setup of tag team, uh, t you know, ta uh, you know, setting up a tag team thing where you have these two opponents that are go uh, like you have the opponents for two different matches on each side. And it kind of worked, and it, it kind of works in the end. You get a little bit here and there, but you don't get too terribly much. They actually... And for the most part, I don't think they were technically, each opponent was technically legal at any given time in the, in the match as well. You just had little snippets of them working with each other. And the match ends after, like I said, EC3, or EC3 in this sense, uh, as he's being called there. Um, <laughs> it's still hilarious that they, they, they went out of their way to, like, put the touches into that. And I kind of like that aspect that they went out of their way to uh, uh, to go the extra mile to make EC3 like even bigger of a heel and f and try and have everybody call him by a different name and change the music and try to say oh I'm part of the culture and everything to go along with it when he completely isn't uh, go, uh, like I said I like the little touches that they put into the, uh, into this side um, but like I said it ends with that uh, him strapping the referee and then there's the big brawl that ends the uh, ends the show, but they have a spot earlier in the match where El Patron takes the strap with uh, EC3 just sitting up on the turnbuckles, and he just uses the strap in front of the referee and no DQ, no nothing, just what? But he used the. This isn't a no DQ match. No. Oh. It was one of those little mess up moments that they decided it's like, oh, we're just going to do whatever we want. And the rule book can go over here for a little bit <laughs> to go along with it. But otherwise, uh, decent enough match. You kind of expected it to end in a brawl uh, to go along with it. Uh, like I said, you had little snippets here and there of Patron working with uh, Bobby Lashley and a little bit of EC3 working with James Storm. Throughout, throughout there, so kind of building up going into their pay-per-view match. Just little awkwardnesses here and there that kind of, like, the, it's, like they have those little touches that they put in there that make them seem like they're doing good, but then they have this little touch that they completely forget about. It's like, oh, El Patron would just use his strap for no reason in the match in front of the referee and there's no DQ. That, you know, it's those little things. If you're going to put the little details into the other stuff, you got to watch those little details in the matches as well. At least just to me. It, because it kind of just takes you out of it at that point in time. Especially with the fact that it ends in a DQ with Lash or with EC3 uh, giving uh, using a strap on the referee to go along with it. It's like, okay. Um, uh, okay on that one. But otherwise, uh, you know, decent build-up going into the pay-per-view. Right? Going into Slammiversary, I thought there was some decent stuff in this show. You had some good matches. I, like I said, I thought the the six-way elimination match was good. It didn't really serve much of a purpose, but it was at least a good match in, in that sense of it. And it came off rather decent. Uh, going in, uh, in, like a good chunk of the show came off rather decent. They were building towards the pay-per-view matches for the most part in the show and I kind of, and I really like that aspect that they were able to uh, fit everything in there they were building it and making it logical going into the pay-per-view itself so with that being said that's everything I've got on impact wrestling this week so I hope you guys enjoyed everything in this video and I thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day